And joining us live in studio, Jackie Shando's political commentator, Botsang Mwilwa, as a political analyst, Carl Niehaus, MKMVA NEC member. Good evening to you and thanks so much for joining us. And if I didn't observe protocol in the right order, do pardon me. Uh, I hope we'll still remain friends. So what does this tell us now, especially with the DA coming out saying uh, allegations at least of uh, cross-party funding uh, for campaigns as opposed to what the minister had disclosed? I'll start with you, Mr. Niehaus. Well, I think that, uh, you know, the DA will obviously try to make political capital out of this. Uh, one has to be very careful to allow this kind of political capital to be made because the Democratic Alliance themselves do not have clarity and do not have transparency about how they get their political funding. And we have to be very careful for one party to try and catch flies on the other about this particular matter. Mm. Is it about party political funding or is it about wasteful expenditure, in your view, uh, Jackie, what the DA is trying to, uh, to reveal? Well, it's a combination of the two, and obviously there is a relationship between the two for obvious reasons. But uh, what's also interesting is that, seemingly, inside the ANC, the strategy of the anti-Zuma campaigners to take some moral high ground and to present themselves as paragons of ethics and morality uh, as against that of Jacob Zuma, who's seen as someone who has put the ends into disrepute and because of the corrupt administration, it, it is falling apart because one by one are being exposed to be very far from that position of being clean, of being ethical, and having some sort of political integrity and being beyond reproach. So we must not altogether dismiss the claims by the DA. It is worrying. Governor Mbegi municipality existing in one of the poorest communities in the country. There's no way you can say you've spent 10 million rents on awarding prizes prizes and gifts and flowers and all sorts of things on our people lack basic facilities, water, sanitation, healthcare, education. Yeah, I've attended the Governor Mbeki Human Settlements Award and it is really uh, one where they, they highlight uh, you know, community leaders who are unsung heroes, so to speak, who have done over and above what their limited resources does. And then there's an auction and all sorts of things. So I'm saying that the money in itself, I'm sure, can be justified if you do your recon and you point out, OK, so much has gone for this particular purpose, as opposed to automatically assuming that it essentially was a, a wasteful expenditure. But Sang, what's your view? Uh, absolutely, Cindy. What <clears throat> we should recall is, and let's take the face of Lindy Wesusul and put it aside for a moment. It is common cause and practice in government that employees of government departments are rewarded or awarded with gifts. Now, at this moment, we shouldn't look at uh, the cost as overall because nobody has gone deep and dark into what were the costs for? 10 million looks like a big figure, but we all know that uh, the Department of Human Settlement is a very big government department. It's represented in all provinces and so forth. I am not saying 10 million is justifiable to can buy a, a, a corporate gifts for employees. That's not what I'm saying. The DA is focusing on uh, uh, flowers only, but corporate gifts can include flowers, can include memory sticks and pens and all those things also to run into a conclusion that she used it for her own personal campaign. She's an ANC member, she's an ANC minister. If, if anybody would have benefited from the 10 million that was used for corporate gifts, it would have been the <coughs> ANC as an organization and not a single individual within that. What we need to do, in, coming from a public administrative perspective, is to look at the details of where was the money spent, the time period, and the number of people within the Department of Human Settlements who benefited from that. And I think that, uh, you know, we're going to hear some of these things between now and December, the elective conference of the ANC. Sure. We're going to hear a lot of these things. They're going to come popping out one by one. But I want to agree with Carl and the other four speakers who are saying what the ANC was supposed to do was to supposed to come united with a woman representative representing the organization. Now, you're going to see not only the DA are taking Lindy Wesisul in this instance. You're going to see even attacks from the ruling party itself, the critics and the other factions of the ruling party coming and saying, but how did you spend 10 million? Remember, this is not personal money. This is not organizational money. This is public service money. So the attacks are going to come from the opposition, from within other factions, 
and, and, and from the concerned groups who will say, but how do you spend 10 million when you build one RDP house with a cost of 15,000 rents? So people will start looking at it like with 10 million, you could have built a certain number of houses. Yeah. Mr. Nihaus, are you also of the view that her availing herself uh, as a nominee as presidential candidate is uh, divisive not only in the Women's League primarily, where there was already two contenders, uh, just in the party generally, saying that uh, she is standing to save and fix the ANC? Well, let me say a couple of things. The first one that I wanted to say is that I think this particular issue around the 10 million, it needs to be properly investigated. Because we have to understand that a party such as the opposition party, the Democratic Alliance, obviously will try to put the worst possible spin on to it. So let's investigate it properly. The second point I want to make is it is actually very important for every ANC member to be very careful about what the impressions are that we create. Because we live in a society where there's huge poverty, there's a massive gap between the rich and poor. So I think all of us have to have a sensitivity about how money is spent, especially when it is government money, and to make sure that we do not create inadvertently, even if it's not the intention, and perhaps even if nothing untowards have happened inadvertently, an impression that there's wasteful spending because the poverty in South Africa is so bad that we cannot afford that. Absolutely. Now, thirdly, it is the right of any candidate, including uh, Lindiwe Sisulu, to, to stand as a candidate for the presidency or any other position for the African National Congress. What is, however, important is the manner in which the campaigns are being conducted. And I think that is the message that President Zuma also delivered to us at the National Policy Conference. It's fine. It's part of the democratic process. We will open the formal nominations for the various candidacies, including the presidency in September. But it's the manner in which we conduct that campaign. If it becomes a vicious, negative campaign, where we undermine not just individuals within the party who stand for particular positions, but where we actually begin to damage the ANC itself, then it is wrong. And we have to be very careful how we do this. All of us, whichever the candidate is, have to keep in mind the critical issue that the African National Congress has been as successful as it has been up to now because of unity. And we must work for unity even during contests. Yeah, I want to go back to what you say, the perceived um, splurge, uh, corruption, uh, wasteful expenditure at the, at the risk of not delivering critical services to communities uh, versus what government programs have always been standing there's a governor Becky, a flagship program to highlight uh, those leaders and and uh, employees who excel and exceed above what is required of them so there is a budget that is allocated of there course. are provincial programs that are run that will culminate into a national gala dinner prize giving etc that should those then be trimmed down, as it were, or reduce the budget, or even abandoned, in light of uh, Cindy, looking after the poor? there's wrong with acknowledging people who do good work. It's even part of the whole Batu Pele principle to do so and acknowledge it. I think it's again a question of perception. So I do not want to judge harshly tonight because I do not have all the facts on whether there is a need to trim down, to step back. Perhaps there is. But the perception issue is critically important because, you know, in politics, the reality is that perception becomes reality. And in South Africa, I repeat again, with a huge gap between rich and poor, that issue on perception and that there should not be even a perception of wasteful expenditure is absolutely critical. Mm. Cindy, if I may just come in, I'm glad that Carl has raised the perception issue. I've said it before. Uh, where the ruling party is failing is to manage in perceptions. They are failing dismally in doing that. And one of the reasons for this failure, it is the divisions within the movement or the, the organization or the party. But again, the government, we are talking government money and we should be leaving ANC out of this because this is government money. 
the government and the department, the spokesperson, the finance people within the Department of Human Settlement, they are supposed to come out to say, these are the monies that were budgeted for, these were the procedures that mm. were followed in awarding employees of the department, these awards. And, and it's happened in all government departments. I can put my head on the table. Mm. All government departments and agencies are awarding their employees uh, various forms of awards for performance and so mm -hmm. forth. And that is well in line with the labor relations practices. That is well in line with compensating your employees. We know that a lot of government agencies, telecom, ESCOM, SAA, they've been getting performance bonuses for their executive and staff members. But to run into conclusions and say, uh, the current Minister of Human Settlement has used 10 million to buy flowers. I mean, come on, and give it to the employees. Those employees, and knowing Lindy Wesisulu herself, she wouldn't just spend 10 million on flowers with the DG being there to give it to employees who are starving, and most of the employees in human settlements, you may find that actually the flowers won't put food on their table and so forth. We should look deep into what was the money spent for it. Was it budgeted or not? Was there misappropriation and misuse of funds? And if not so, then we, we focus on you know prosecuting and charging those who yeah. have held themselves in a manner that was not in a prescribed way. Yeah, but Jackie, do you think... The yeah. analysis is very important, but you know, Cindy, the important thing, and government, unfortunately, and I say it with sadness, sometimes fails, and that is how to communicate. It is so critical to communicate openly. What we should have seen in this whole process, and I hope it comes, I hope that once the analysis is done that we get a transparent giving a breakdown of exactly what the funds were used for, what the purpose was, and what was achieved. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, even when we do communicate, we tend to communicate late. And by then, certain perceptions had already settled in, often wrong perceptions, because we have not addressed the issues at the right moment when it was necessary to do so. And I really hope in this instance, as soon as it is practically possible, that we're going to get this kind of open, transparent communication. Because I agree, I do not have a feeling or an impression of Minister Suzulu as someone who will just be wasteful in this manner. So I think it needs to be assessed properly so that we can understand what the situation is. Jackie, just the timing. I mean, this happened in the 2013-14 financial year. It's something that could have been brought up. It might even have been in National Assembly to account for it. There are all these subcommittees uh, for, uh, you know, oversight. Uh, and there's the Public Finance Management Act. All sorts of checks and balances or, or mechanisms that were there. Are you, are you, do you question why this has oh, now become an <clears throat> issue? Absolutely. Uh, we are in the build-up to the elective conference of the ANC in December. And uh, interesting enough, the deer has already come out to say all the candidates that have availed themselves for the presidency of the ANC are ethically and morally unfit to lead the ANC and by extension the country, you know? So it uh, then follows, obviously, that they will do much as they can to dig up how can we decampaign this one, how can we portray them, all of them, in a negative light to send a message that says no one is the, in the ANC meets the integrity, the ethics, you know, sort of uh, requirement. No one is beyond reproach. They are all uh, susceptible to uh, corruption and so on and so forth. It's going to happen. As uh, Botsang was saying, Ella, I, I certainly share those sentiments. We're going to see more and more of this coming out. The opposition, the EFF, everyone is going to say, this is what is wrong with this one. We saw Jeff Khadebe availed himself. Uh, and a few days after that, there was some expose of him and some inappropriate uh, uh, relationship with some staff at the union buildings. So these things are going to go. But I want to emphasize on the point that perhaps we do need a complete overhaul, even in terms of the budget principles in this country. Because even the Bible says not all that is permissible is ethical and moral. In a country, you know, to somehow reinforce what Carla has been saying. It's, a, it's a, one of the most unequal societies on the planet. We house the richest amongst the poorest in terms of global standards. There's no way that in any municipality you can say a 10 million rand spent on just flowers or prizes is something that we can overlook because the certain processes, perhaps across even state SOEs, Telecom, SAA, there has to be among the political class 
a political consciousness that must find ways of shifting resources. In you know, having said point. that, I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking about service providers who look forward to these calendar events <laughs> and know that at this point I'll be providing security, <laughs> drinks and awards, exactly. framing, etc. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily just one side, it doesn't you, can, you, you can be politically conscious and correct. And, and people, are, like I said, if you look at the overall figure and say the government or department has spent 10 million, and you don't realize the number of jobs that would have been created by small businesses that provided those services to that department. We must look at this from a broader perspective. It could have been T-shirts printed by a single black woman who owns a company of printing those T-shirts and then benefited from that process. So uh, uh, we shouldn't rush into it. But again, I think the main topic also comes to your point of whether this dented Lindy Wissisulu's you know, campaign. campaign towards the president. I don't think so. This is this is very small. This is not national elections. That's another point that people are making a mistake. We are not campaigning or we are not focusing on national elections of the country. It's internal elections of the African National Congress as the ruling party. There's a lot of spending in government. We can go and dig the Western Cape government and check how much they spend uh, annually on gifts and corporate gifts. And, and, and many other things. We can go and look at how the government today, when there was fires in Naisna, the central government allocated funds to the fires in Naisna. There were fires in Johannesburg. We don't know how much money was, fire, but was allocated to the fires in the building in Johannesburg. So these are minor issues that will pop up until September, October 2017. We pass September, October 2017 when we have one or two candidates going for presidency and we start getting clear. But all those who are putting their names out, Cindy, <laughs> and the viewers towards the president of the AC. This is the very first time you've got so many candidates yeah. who wants to be the president. Mm -hmm. They must know that fire is coming their way. Exposures are going to come out. You know, secrets and skeletons from cupboards are going to start coming out. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's but but daggers happen. are not necessarily just coming out externally, though, or from the opposition. Internally, mm -hmm. you also have the issue of whether uh, the branches, uh, you know, you appeal to them. Do you have the necessary support from ground level? Uh, and also which faction you might be uh, agitating as well? Well, you see, it, this is, and, and you're quite right to say, this is an election inside the African National Congress. So while we can have the Democratic Alliance and others doing grandstanding, and there may be impressions created amongst the general public, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the people who are going to vote at the National Elective Conference in December are the branches of the ANC and the various other organizations that are part of the ANC leagues and associations. Now, at the end of the day, those branches, I believe, are not going to allow themselves to be influenced by some of this kind of shenanigans by the Democratic Alliance and other political parties. They are going to deal with the issues as it is being presented to them at branch level. And hopefully what we can see is that there will be a combination of discussion around ANC policies and leaders. Because the ideal situation is that the branches will take a decision on who the leaders should be that will be elected in December on the basis of how they will be able to implement the policies that the branches would like to see forwarded by the ANC. Does fixing and saving the ANC resonate with uh, what uh, ANC policy is, if that's going to be a campaign strategy or even uh, a tagline, uh, Jackie? Interestingly, my view is that for the first time since the advent of democracy in 1994, the fate of the African National Congress will not necessarily be decided by the delegates at the elective conference of the ANC. Unfortunately, progressively from 1994, the ANC has contributed to the weakening of its own brand and of its own position in the imagination of the broader society. So we may see for once in a long time, I, I'm of the view that if the NC chooses, elects a leader, that the broader society says, we lack, we don't have confidence in this person, it might backfire in 2019. Ah. Hmm. That, I fully disagree because my understanding of how society responds to the African National Congress is that it responds to the ANC as an organization with policies. Mm -hmm. It is not going to reject the ANC on the basis of 
some interpretation of one leader being less electable than another. Mm. It is going to respond on the basis of the organization, the ANC, and that is why it's so important that the ANC as organization with all its leaders conducts itself properly and follows the right procedures to get the right policies. But because the place. electoral yeah. process is such that we vote for a party, not an individual, sure. that I don't think we have the luxury of Well, we deciding. do vote for a party, not for the individual. But, but, the right. but can the, yes, no, no, can the ANC uh, uh, risk having a leader who, who, who does not resonate? Are we saying, sorry, are we mm. saying that <laughs> any of the leaders that are at the moment nominated and the nomination process has just started, it's not even official, will not necessarily find a base of support amongst the general public. It is totally premature. Mr. To Nihal, just final word to, to what's out of time. I just totally wanted premature. to say, Carl, Carl is correct about the historical ANC. However, the mistake that the ANC is doing, and he's also doing the same mistake, it's ignoring the involvement sure. of politics in the country. The situation is no longer the same. The people of South Africa have been voting for the ANC, as he correctly says, because they've got confidence in their party historically and their policies. But the situation has changed. We have seen people now, outsiders of the ANC, putting or preferring candidates while they are not members of the ANC. If the ANC is going to risk come December 2017 and put a leader that is not appealing sure. to the general society, who, co who makes the biggest the composition, of the, vote. the majority of the voters, but, that's a risk they but will we take. But we don't even know though. who the leaders will be. So this kind of argument is a very vague and up-in-the-air argument. Well, we're going to have to take we it off, say that offline then. Uh, uh, please, can you proceed uh, uh, not off, this off the set? <laughs> and that's what's on with political <laughs> analyst. Uh, Jackie Shandu is a political commentator, Carl Niehaus, who dominates the conversation, is uh, MKMVA NEC member. You at home, thanks so much for joining us. We're back after this.